What's going on guys, Mr. Loud over here, and I wanna say before we get into the video, if you like this video, as well as the other content on the channel, go ahead and click that subscription button, click the notification bell, wax the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much guys, and enjoy the video. So just a few days ago, I had the privilege of spending time with the very own famous Ivan LaCroix. He was down in the area, and so we got to spend the day together, talk, do some detailing together, and we got to make some content together, so that'll come out very shortly. Uh, but one thing that he brought me on to that I want to go ahead and do a video on is Rinseless wash now his company diy detail has a product called rinseless wash and i'll do a review on that product in the future but i want to more so focus on the actual rinseless wash method i started my business doing waterless washes and so i kind of stayed away from there ever since it kind of had a bad taste in my mouth and i haven't really gravitated back to using waterless wash products but one thing that he made sure to explain to me was there's a big difference between waterless wash and rinseless washing and so what I'm going to do is on the vehicle that I have here I'm on the work I'm on the job I'm gonna take you around the vehicle it's not the most filthy vehicle it's actually fairly maintained I see it about once a month and the driver doesn't drive whole too 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 much but there is dirt on the vehicle there is a large layer of dust on the vehicle and this is a vehicle that needs cleaned uh, but I want to go ahead and showcase to you the rinseless wash method and kind of maybe dispel some myths that someone may have when approaching and, and, and considering whether this is something they even want to add to their business or even consider and entertain this thought at all. So guys, I hope you enjoy this content and I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so here is the vehicle. As you can see, there's definitely dirt on the vehicle. I mean, it's it's it, there's dirt on it. It's, it's not filthy or disgusting. I don't really detail many filthy or disgusting vehicles. That's the, the benefit of being in business so long. You can pick and choose where you go and who you take care of. Um, but you know, it's it definitely needs cleaning. It definitely needs some work. You see the wheels? There's definitely dust and brake dust on those wheels. Um, uh, is, is there any bug damage? There's not really much bug damage, thankfully. Um, but I will go ahead and treat the front for some minor bug damage. Um, and I'm kind of excited to try this method because if this works a whole lot quicker than a standard bucket wash with the foam cannon method, then this might be something that I implement more often in my business. So this will be fun. Yes, all right, so here we go. Um, I would. I'm sorry guys, I would put the camera more back, but unfortunately it's hitting the garage door as we speak. So I actually should probably move it forward a half an inch. Um, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna rinse down the vehicle with the pressure washer first because it's not a waterless wash, it's a rinseless wash. So we're just not gonna rinse after applying the soap or after applying the solution, right? Um, and so what I'm gonna do is rinse it off. I've already done the wheels and tires just because I wanna kind of focus on the body of the vehicle right now. And uh, I'm gonna see how long does this actually take? All right, so I have my two gallons of water, my one ounce of rinseless wash solution. Let's just go ahead and go at it. All right, well, let's see if I can go ahead and give my thoughts in a, in a cohesive and concise manner here. Um, so one of the biggest myths of uh, rinseless washing is that it has to, or it must scratch the vehicle. And they usually say things along the lines of, well, if you're using a sponge, that's one thing. And uh, if you're not foaming down the vehicle, that's another thing. Well, a lot of things doesn't, they don't make sense to me. Uh, one thing that doesn't make sense to me when it comes to rinseless washing is, is I noticed that these products usually don't feel the same amount of lubricity as a soap would in a bucket. Um, and, and that's something that is, something I still need to learn about, something I'm a little confused about, but I'm assuming if you use the right interface or the right apparatus, I'm right now, I'm using the legacy sponge from DIY Detail. Um, and you know, a lot of people will say that, you know, if you're using a sponge, it's not good. And so as far as the lubricity aspect, uh, I still need to learn about the chemistry of the polymers. And even though it feels like the lubricity is less than a, a soap with a couple ounces in a bucket, uh, for some reason, it still seems to be a very safe method. So are we using too much soap in the bucket or is there something different about these rinseless wash products? Not all of them, not all of them are the same. Some are garbage, of course, but you know, the upper end ones, the, the ones that seem to have a good name and seem to produce good results. Uh, is there something about these products that we just don't know about that's in the chemistry? 
Uh, that's something I need to learn about. So if you know what that is, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. But as far as the sponge goes, so a lot of people think, well, you can't use a sponge. Well, <clears throat> I mean, what is a sponge? It's foam, right? Um, not every sponge is the same. Not every sponge acts as foam. Uh, you, if you get a, a, a sponge to wash your dishes, yeah, that's pretty, pretty rough and pretty aggressive. Um, but then you have these types of foams that are much, much more soft. And a perfect example of that is when we polish out a vehicle, what are we using? We're using a foam pad, right? Uh, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna finish the vehicle, use a polishing finishing pad, right? A very very soft foam with with uh, with you know with with a polish on it. And so what that does is that aids and allows you to have a perfect finish. And so that those are some some misconceptions here. Another misconception is that you work slower. And I didn't mention this in the in the end because actually what happened is as I was recording this. Uh, the camera overheated on me. I tried to leave it in the shade, but it's still overheated, and so that didn't quite work out here. But you know, by me going straight from the uh, from the washing process to the drying process instead of rinsing it now, and also I didn't rinse, then do foam cannon, then wash, then rinse, and then use a towel. Uh, I just went ahead and I did. I, I rinsed, did the did the rinseless wash. And then I went ahead and I dried. So I'm skipping two steps there on this vehicle. Now, is that necessary for all vehicles? No, you know, if, if the rinseless wash product has foaming agents in it, you could use that in a foam can and that, you know, that, that is what it is, right? Uh, but uh, here I skipped two steps and I didn't, like I said, the camera overheated. Uh, but I end up finishing this vehicle in 10 minutes, the exterior of the vehicle. I tried to work at a normal pace that I would normally work at. So I'm working efficient, but I'm not Speedy Gonzalez over here. So I try to be quick enough uh, at a normal, moving, consistent pace. Um, and so one thing I noticed is that there were no added swirl marks to the vehicle and that's very very important like i said i don't quite know and understand how these things work as far as the sponge goes yes the, the it's a very very uh high quality uh soft sponge and that helps there um, and then also the product itself has polymers inside of it now as far as the washing process goes i don't understand how the those polymers differ from what would be in a car wash soap. Uh, I'm still learning here. Um, but you know, what I do know is that when I was drying the vehicle, the polymers in the rinseless wash product aided and acted as a drying aid in essence to the drying process. And so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take a quick detail spray and we'll spray, do a couple sprays on the panel to add lubricity and some polymers and to make it a safer drying process. Well, that's already on the vehicle due to the rinseless wash product. And so we're almost killing two birds with one stone there. Um, some things that I'm, I'm learning about, you know, um, I, I understand that rinseless washing is a, it's a, it's a technique. So there's a lot of things I'm still learning about. You know, there are some creases and crevices that you're gonna have to dig in there with a rinseless wash that a pressure washer might be a little bit more effective at getting into. Now, no method is perfect. All methods have their flaws, but it seems that, um, you know, the rinseless wash aids very well in cleaning the vehicle, but I am concerned about some of the cracks of the vehicle, uh, some of the little smaller spaces. Now, of course, you can take a brush, you can take another towel, and you can go in there, but if we're gonna be just using one wash mitt or just one sponge, you know, there are its limitations, and so that's something that you would have to find out how to navigate and maneuver around in, in your business, in, in your lifestyle. One thing I really like about this, though, is that if you're the kind of person that maybe cleans their vehicle once a week or once every other week and you don't want to pull out the hose you don't want to pull out all this equipment and all that stuff uh this is very very uh quick and efficient and i think that's one of the biggest upsides to the rinseless wash technique i know back when waterless washes were coming out 10 15 years ago a lot of people would say you can clean your vehicle in a quarter of the time with the waterless wash i don't know i just never was able to work that quick with it because of all the flipping of the towels and all the different towels in the back and forth from putting down the towels. I mean, there was just a lot of hassle and, and headache getting involved with the waterless wash technique, but it seems like for the rinseless wash, because I'm just using one sponge, dipping it in the bucket, um, and if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, these rinseless washes 
the polymers inside of it help soften the water. So if the, whatever dirt's back in the bucket, right? Uh, it helps soften that and the polymers suspend the dirt from the surface of the vehicle. Now, when it comes to rinseless washes as well, you don't wanna go ahead and dig into the paint. You wanna go ahead and kind of let the weight of the sponge work for you, uh, only applying very minimal pressure, just enough to make sure that you're able to control the sponge. So overall, I really like the technique and I think that there are a lot of benefits and pluses to it. One, being the time. Two, being just the safety of the drying process. And three, being the fact that it's just less hassle. It's very easy to use and very efficient as far as a business standpoint goes, where now you need only one product to do a few different jobs rather than seven products to do seven different jobs. So I hope that all makes sense. All right guys, so here is the finished result of using the rinseless wash technique on the vehicle. And the vehicle is very slick. I mean, I have a great layer of protection on the vehicle already, but the uh, rinseless wash really helps and aids in protecting. There's polymers inside of a rinseless wash product. Now I can't speak for everyone, but you know, a, a good quality rinseless wash is gonna have good, decent polymers inside of it that will aid in lubrication aid in some protection. Uh, they're not really meant for protection, but they do aid and allow for some UV protection, some, you know, some minor protection, right? Um, but I already do have a good layer of protection on here, so the rinseless wash seemed to work as a great method for maintaining this vehicle. It's probably had maybe about 250 to 300 miles since the last time I cleaned it. You can see the paint looks great. Um, no streaks or anything in the mirrors. Everything worked out very, very well. So uh, I happen to be a big fan of this system and method. And there you guys have it. That was me working with the rinseless washing method. Now, this is something that is very, very, not unique to me, but something that I haven't really had the most confidence in doing because of the fear tactics that are in the industry but after spending some time with Ivan LaCroix and doing it on my own now uh, I feel much more confident I see that this is actually a I wouldn't say a far superior method to cleaning a vehicle but there are a lot of strengths to this type of method one is that only using a little bit of product can last for many many different vehicles uh, Two, the same product that you use on the outside of the vehicle also works on the inside so you're not wasting time going back and forth and wasting money on chemicals for the interior so that helps and aids with that not only that though but the smell is good you're not getting all the water you're not having all the runoff you know there's just so many different pros to using a rinseless method and so uh, if you use the rinseless method go ahead and type rinseless in the comments section below let's try to get this engagement a little bit higher here uh, but guys mr lad here signing out thank you so much for tuning into the channel if you have not already done so click that subscription button click the notification bell wax the like button for the youtube algorithm thank you so much and have a wonderful day